Hey guys, so today we're crossing the streams and coloring this cute little succulent with pretty much every marker I've got. Well, no, not really, but there's definitely a good sample from a variety of brands, including Shinhan Twin Touch, Prismacolor, Marvy La Plume Fine, uh, Blick Studio Brushes, Copic Sketches, and I think that's actually the gamut. Uh -huh. So I hope you guys like succulents, I hope you guys like alcohol markers, and I hope you guys like mixed media because we're going to end this tutorial by making it a mixed media tutorial and pulling out the watercolors. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply an all over color with a very light blue green. I am using BG11 and I am working closely from reference. And this piece has been drawn and inked on fluid cold press watercolor paper, not their fluid 100 watercolor paper, which is excellent for watercolor, but not so great for mixed media because it doesn't take alcohol marker very well, being 100% cotton rag. Instead, we're using a less expensive cellulose based paper, AKA wood pulp, which is one of my favorite papers to use for these sort of mixed media applications. Unfortunately, I have a bit of a smuts that's going to cause a little bit of smearing, unfortunately. And this was inked with Kaime Soul K drawing ink, which is a alcohol marker and wait, surely I didn't use the Kaime because it's not waterproof. I must have used the Sailor Mitzel Ida. My apologies, I actually drew and inked this last year. And while I was doing a little bit of winter cleaning, I happened to find that uh, I had some unfinished pieces that I would really love to finish. And since my succulents tend to be super popular at conventions, I figured I'd give it a shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this in time lapse. All right, so now that I've got that base color down, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in some of the yellower highlights using a variety of my yellow green and yellow markers. And I actually find it really hard to do tutorials while I'm actively trying to think about colors. So you'll have to forgive me, I'm gonna work in silence, but hopefully you guys can kind of follow along with what I'm doing. Then I'm gonna go back in with the blue green that I started with and blend and darken some of these colors. Now, one of the reasons I really like working on watercolor papers, like this fluid watercolor paper, is it tends to be very thirsty. Now, some of you might have a problem with that because it does tend to drain your markers quicker, but I find that I can get much smoother blends on this paper than any other paper that I've used. So I'm not really a big fan of like the marker card stocks. They're okay, but what I really, where I really think it's at is with um, mixed media papers and bristols and uh, watercolor papers. And as I said, Fluid 100 is fairly inexpensive. I mean, Fluid watercolor paper, not the Fluid 100. They are two different things and you want regular Fluid watercolor paper. Um, it is inexpensive. It comes in a variety of shapes. You can buy it in sheets and cut it down if you so desire. This is the little six by six block. Um, and uh, it just really holds up pretty well. And I am leaving some of the edges sort of uncolored other than that initial pass that I gave everything because I really wanna start um, introducing contrast and light and dark. That's another really nice thing about watercolor paper is that you can build up contrast because this paper can really take a lot of ink. And as I mentioned, it will, there, 
it will run your markers dry. So if you're trying to conserve your ink, this is really not the best paper for you necessarily. But you know, to me, what's the point of tools if you don't use them? All right, next we're gonna grab a greener green, and this is a bright green from Blick Studio brushes one of the Blick Studio brushes, I should say. And I really like these. They're a really good sort of Copic marker dupe because they've got that really nice brush tip and I am blending the color out a bit because it's a little more intense than I wanted, but that's okay because this paper can take it. And there are definitely areas where I want this intense color. I just didn't want it quite right there but as you can see on this paper it blends out super well and the technique the techniques i'm showing you guys um this is my own illustration but it would work for um stamping as well you could always stamp on watercolor paper and you can use your um alcohol markers on watercolor paper it's all about playing around and figuring out what works for you and what works for the sort of things you want to make. And I don't know if I'm going to get around to using every marker I pulled out, but I certainly wanted to have the option and I wanted them to be visible and available. I think many of you guys can commiserate with when our things are put away, we forget we have them. That's a problem here in my studio. Most of my organization is things put away in boxes and drawers where I can't really find them. But other than for review purposes, I do try to use what I have. And I find that on these sort of really absorbent papers, if you really want nice blending techniques, it really helps to work quickly and take advantage of the paper having some residual alcohol in it. You guys, unfortunately, are gonna have to excuse me for a bit. I have a cat who thinks he needs to get into things. All right, sorry about that. And apparently he thinks He's gonna be on my lap now. So I get the joy, you heard him? I get the joy of rendering around a cat. So, so for those of you who are like, well, Becca, you don't know what it's like to have to try and make art around a baby. You're right, I don't know what it's like to try and make art around a baby, but I do know what it's like to have a 10 pound male Russian blue force his way, claws and all onto my lap. And that's, that's somewhat similar, right? Definitely very inconvenient. You guys see how, well, my camera's not really doing it true justice, but I'm getting some pretty smooth blends because I'm working on what class? Watercolor paper. And would you guys believe that even though I have hot press watercolor paper, I don't know that I've ever tried it with markers. How ridiculous is that? I'm the one who's always telling you guys to try new things and experiment and play around and take risks. And I haven't tried hot press watercolor paper with my markers. I don't know what's wrong with me. And I've been working pretty steadily back and forth between a Blick Studio brush marker and a Copic. So you guys can see they are very compatible. And I really recommend, and I am under zero obligation to Blick. They are not a sponsor. They don't know I exist other than that I spend money at their online shop all the time. And I used to buy stuff from them in Savannah, Georgia when I was attending SCAD and they had a shop on Norris Street. Um, I've given them loads of my money, but they don't know I exist 
Um, so I'm under no obligation to say this other than I genuinely think the Blick Studio brush markers are a great alternative to Copic. They're very affordable. Some people say they're refillable, but no one has been able to link me to proof yet. So I am not going to go out on a limb and tell you guys they're refillable until I know. I mean, you could probably force it with some refill inks, but would it be a direct match? No, probably not. Yes, I see you. So we're going to move in here with a more intense blue green. And when I ask you guys to link me to a source, that's not me. I'm not like trying to pick a fight. I'm not trying to argue, but before I can tell other people something, I need to know. And usually the way I find out is through my own research. And if I can't find it, it's, it's, it's hard for me to go out on a limb and tell people to do something without having a link to someone else who's at least tried it. So my intention is never to be just argumentative with you guys, but I, only want to give you guys the best information that I have access to. So um, I'm not going to repeat something until either I've found it out myself or um, I have a link to a trusted source where someone has demonstrated it. So I know I can come off as kind of argumentative and that really, really, really is not my intention. I'm just kind of really nerdy and when it comes to art stuff, very analytical. And I know some people like that and some people think I'm a huge jerk. So I just wanted y'all to know that that wasn't, my intention isn't to like challenge you. It's not meant to be a contest. It's just before I can share that sort of information, I, I need to see further proof. And if your further proof is you doing it, that is 110% valid. That is still further proof. That's just, you know, I just need to see something more than, well, I heard, I saw on the internet. Like, man, I have seen all kinds of stuff on the internet. I've watched enough Threadbanger videos to know how <laughs> Pinterest pins tend to go. I don't need to, to do them and find out for myself. I mean, Pinterest has re recently launched a tried it button. So that should tell you something about they know the validity of some of the things that get pinned to their site. Okay, so I'm gonna move in now with a greener green, Willow. Cause some of these are not green enough. And I'm gonna keep blending back out with Moon White, um, partially because that will re, um, reintroduce that blue green that I'm seeing with the succulent that I'm referencing. In fact, Willow really isn't, let's try pistachio. That's, that's more the color I was thinking of. Usually I swatch all this stuff out, but been going by the color of the cap and that is just not always indicative. See, see, learn from my mistakes. And it's okay to leave some things not blended out. It's okay to leave some areas where the line is sharper or the contrast is sharper. Um, when you're dealing with a three-dimensional object, not every single thing is going to be super smooth. So it's okay to leave some of that. Oh, I might need to refill ice ocean. It's feeling a little dry.
Okay, so we are just about done with that. Um, there are some other colors though that I haven't really represented. So I'm going in with, what is it, green vice. And then I've actually got a selection of these super tiny La Plume fine brush uh, alcohol markers. They almost look like like drawing pens, but they're alcohol. They're teeny alcohol markers, and I just thought that was too neat a concept to pass up. Unfortunately, they have fiber tips, which I loathe. So good idea, but would have been cool with a different tip. And right now I'm just adding some B705 in there, which is a, um, a very light blue. Then I'm going to, hmm. A little bit of yellow green, but that wasn't really where I was going with that. Um, next, I'm going to add a little bit. Of, oh, that's going to be too purple. I'm going to have to blend that out. It's okay. Make it work. Nice thing about succulents is they do tend to have other colors besides what you would think of as the dominant color. So a little bit of that purple here and there makes it look intentional instead of like I grabbed a color that looked lighter than it actually is. That's the nice thing about alcohol markers is that we can sort of push and pull and blend them back and forth, get them right where we need them to be. To an extent, you can do that with watercolors too, but watercolors tend to get muddy way before alcohol markers tend to look a bit muddy. Now we're gonna grab a very light pink and a darker pink. So R800 and R793, we're gonna start with that very light pink. And we're adding it just to some of the leaves, not to all, cause not all of them have it. And then with the darker pink, I'm just gonna feather that in. And then if I need to, blend that out. Okay, so all that is left is the darkest shadows. So I've got G28. And I'm gonna start knocking some of those in. And if it gets too dark, I'm just gonna blend it out a little bit with BG15. And I'm sorry if me switching between markers and going by their family names is confusing. It would be confusing for me too. Basically, I'm blending out the sort of dark, very dark yellow green um, with a blue green just to sort of soften the transition between the two colors. And honestly, I should probably just refer to what kind of colors I'm using because I find that that is more helpful when you're learning how to color things than referring to color families, which are not standard between brands or referring to 
um, color names, which are sometimes like flesh, right? Like, well, great. If you're Caucasian, then flesh makes, it's the same color as your skin. But if you're not, you know, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. See, markers like watercolor do benefit from building up some contrast. Just helps make all the layers sort of pop and stand out. My camera is making the contrast look a lot greater than it actually is in a negative way, but that's all right. You'll just have to come see me at one of my shows this year and see my stuff in person. Right, so what, oh, I didn't even use any of the Prismas. You know what, that's okay, because we can use the Prismas to push some of the colors back. This is a very light, this is mint cream, which is like such a light green that it's a very good blending pastel. We can just use that to help push some of the colors so that they're a little less extreme. Then, because I'm always one to ruin things, I'm gonna add a little bit of this pink, which is coral pink, it's a blit color, in the shadows because it's a contrast to the blue-green I'm using. So it'll help make for more believable shadow. And then I'm just gonna grab a couple of browns from the, is that a brown or is that an orange? You can tell with these. Um, a few browns from my La Plume brush pens and we're gonna zoom out, yeah. And I'm just going to add sort of a, oh, that's more like a skin tone pebbly background. Skin tone's actually okay because it's kind of a contrasting color for this, so. Ugh. That is really a yellow-orange. That does not go on top of that. But it could go in some of these. See, that's why you should swap. That's all right. All right, so I'm gonna let the alcohol evaporate and then we're gonna pull out our watercolors and finish this up. Guys, it's time to watercolor. And the purpose of doing watercolor is mostly just to um, maybe enhance some colors or add some shadow. At least the purpose for doing watercolor on these sort of succulents the way I'm doing is to uh, add shadow because it's not going to make the marker muddy so you can glaze on top of it and it's not going to have a detrimental effect. So I'm starting with a yellow ochre and I'm going to add some of that to the four, or really to the background, what am I even saying? It's the foreground of the background, the background of the foreground, foreground of the background, Becca. Uh, <laughs> and I'm really just kind of adding it in here and there, just to sort of give the impression that this is in either a desert setting or a terrarium. You can blend it a bit if you want it to get a little more subtle in the background. scoop up some of that extra water. And I'm really just trying to be light and not overly particular about it. And 
Put that in, in the front. Switch over to a different ochre. And while it's still wet, just brush some of that in as well. And it'll diffuse some underneath. And then if you wanna add a little bit of shadow at this point, some indigo, some Payne's gray, some shadow blue, just while the paint's wet, so it'll diffuse and give it kind of a light shadow. And we're gonna let that dry, I'll zoom in. We'll let that dry slightly elevated. All right, so my paint isn't 100% dry, but it's pretty dry. I'm gonna go in now with a little bit more of the Payne's Gray Shadow Blue. And I'm gonna add just a little bit underneath, and then I'm gonna use clean water to sort of draw it out a bit. And then again, I'm going to let that dry. Okay, so I may end up going back in and adding some brown to the grass, but for now, I wanna show you guys how I like to, I mix shadow colors in a variety of ways. Um, but for this, I'm gonna go with purple. Let me see if I can move everything and a bit of a blue. I'm a really big fan of Holbein's neutral tint, but that particular palette is packed away right now. Oh, that's wet. Well, oh well. So when it comes to painting in my shadow color, I don't wanna cover the whole thing. And sometimes uh, blending out where alcohol marker has been on the paper can be really difficult. I have a feeling the alcohol markers sort of change the amount of water the paper can absorb. So don't rely on being able to blend out. I mean, it's nice if you can do it, but try to keep your strokes neat enough that you're not going to need to. And I'm mostly just adding shadow away from the light source, so closest to the audience. And I am trying to reinforce the shape of the petals and really sort of push those um, highlighted edges. As you can see, the shadow color doesn't actually dim or muddy the color of the leaves. It just mostly sits on top of it, which is why I like doing mixed media between alcohol marker and watercolor. And that's going to look a little bit lighter after it's had a chance to dry. I'm also going to go ahead and add some of that same shadow color here in, oh, that's way too intense. The bottom of the picture, and I'm even going to go in and just sort of want to reinforce that there's watercolor at play. So I want a little bit of a blobby sort of transition the way you get with watercolor. And as the watercolor dries, I can see areas that might need to be a little darker. All right, so for me, the last step with this is letting it dry and then hitting it with, and I mean dry all the way, hitting it either with um, a nice watercolor pencil, like a Derwent Ink Tense, or a very soft um, color pencil, like the Derwent Color Soft, or with white gouache, or with Copic Opaque White. So this needs to dry all the way before we can continue with that. All 
right guys so we are almost done with this piece i just want to add some finishing touches with white so i'm going to go ahead and use this white derwent color soft this is going to allow me to do a, a softer sort of effect than i would get if i just went straight in with the opaque white or even white gouache and you can vary how much white goes down on your paper with your hand pressure. So you're in pretty much total control with how much white you're putting down when you're using um, a color pencil like this. And Derwent Color Soft are very soft uh, color pencils. I'm not usually a fan of color pencils because it just feels very tedious and it feels like it's taking me a very long time to cover a small area of paper. But softer color pencils like these allow me to cover larger areas a little quicker and it doesn't wreck my hand as much as regular color pencils do because regular color pencils tend to strain my hand a fair bit. And then we can start adding the Copic, Copic Opaque White or White Gouache. So I'm gonna go get a clean cup of water and I'll be right back. And the kind of Copic Opaque White I like comes in this little jar, but if you're using White Gouache, it's gonna come in a tube like this and it tends to be sold around the watercolor supplies. And I use both, it really doesn't matter to me which one I'm using. And I'm using a very fine sable brush, but you can use a synthetic if you like. Both are fine choices for this. And then I'm just going to add some white highlights to the sand. And once I've done that, I'm going to let this dry and then remove it from the block. So I hope you guys have found this tutorial helpful. I hope you found it inspiring. I hope it gets you to pick up your alcohol markers and maybe mix brands a little bit. And I hope it gets you to play around using your watercolors with your alcohol markers. If you like this video, please remember to hit like. It lets YouTube know that you want more content like this. If you would enjoy more tutorials like this, make sure you subscribe for more watercolor and alcohol marker tutorials. They come out. Uh, twice a week on this blog every week always something new to take a look at and um, If you would like to join the community and help make more videos like this There are a couple ways you can do that You can help me grow my audience by recommending this video to your friends family Anybody who you think might enjoy or benefit from this video and you can do that by linking it to your favorite social network Twitter tumblr Instagram Pinterest YouTube uh, YouTube, I guess, if you have a channel, and Facebook. All of those are great places, and you would be doing a, me a massive favor, and I would greatly appreciate your help with that. Two, you can head on over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup and join the Art Nerd community. Art Nerds get early access to videos. They get backer exclusive content, and they get voting rights on the sort of stuff that I'm going to be working on in future videos. So if that, that sounds good to you, make sure you join the community. It's only two bucks a month to uh, for access, so less than a cup of coffee. And three, you can write to the companies whose names I mention in these videos. So in this case, Prismacolor, Copic, Shinhan Twin Touch, um, you can write to those companies, let them know how much you enjoy my content and how much you would appreciate a partnership because your good word can go a really long way. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you again really soon. Have a great day. Bye guys.